I met a gypsy. Oh man, one hundred percent. And you know, like the the emotion that you know, like imagine having the audio, you know, between like you and your mechanic on the start line. Like if there was on board, you know, like if you had a mic on yours and these guys could like go to team radio and like, man, it just, it makes the sport thick. And I think that, you know, you watch like a, a drive to survive st- series and you like, you see the personalities and you see the guys with the helmets off. Like Daniel Blair, man, had one of the best points ever, you know, in this podcast, he just said, get the damn helmets off these guys. Like, a- and his point of um not like you guys shouldn't be allowed to have your helmet on until there should be like a two minute warning and that's the only time you could put your helmet on and that might fuck with dudes you know there's probably guys that like they go through the tunnel with their helmet on because they want to get in Mm -hmm. that zone and and it's like that might add a whole new level to the sport of you know like really seeing like this guy's got a game face this guy's nervous and that you know you might want to push back from that against uh, as a racer because it might be outside of your comfort zone but it's like even just those small details dude it is like a you know can really add so much depth and dynamic to this sport and it's like you know you had that big crash in atlanta and so like the supercross world was watching you and i mean that went as viral as a crash can go and it's like if you line back up and your helmet's not on and the world's getting to see the face that goes with that crash like that's super valuable to you as a racer yeah totally i i think that um actually i got a lot of messages about the broadcast how they there was a hot mic on accident i think um Mm. with when it went on peacock if you watch it on peacock yeah yeah i was watching they had a hot mic of me yeah me like explaining and and like pleading my case and talking to the medics and stuff like that um and there was there was some backlash on it even too, and I I was like that's pretty I thought it was pretty cool like it was just Same. straight up it was as transparent as it could be. Um, I'm all about transparency, especially with the fans. Uh, I try to be as transparent as I possibly can. I thought that was cool that people got to like hear and see what was going on down there, and you know I mean there's obviously some stuff that we do that we you know we keep close to ourselves because of. Um, you know, trying to be better than your competition. And, you know, when I'm talking to my trainer, I don't want a hot mic, but, uh, yeah, like I think some of that stuff's cool. Like I even had, uh, when I hurt my knee in Paula, uh, I crashed right in front of the mechanics area. I had to get lifted over the fence and, um, I had an issue, a, a incident with a, with a camera and what happened before it was no one saw, but it was me. I'm sure you saw it like get out of here with the camera. And so many people yeah. were so bummed about it. And like, you know, they're like, Oh, you, you're scared of the camera. And I'm like, man, I'm so far from that. Like I'm all about transparency. You know, I was, I was trying to figure out what was going on with my knee and the dude was just a little bit too close and the medics couldn't even get to me before they even cut that yeah. part on, you know, they were stumbling over a camera guy and I'm like, dude, get out of here. Everyone get out of here. Other than the guys that need to help me get on the cart and get back. Like, I'm hurt, you know, like I knew I was hurt. Yeah. I knew it wasn't just like a, a, a monkey bump and it was just so much going on at the moment. Like if I would have gone back, no, I don't do that. I don't wave the camera guy away. Like totally. I'm, I'm all for the fans seeing what's going on, understanding why, why camera Mac is out of the race and, you know, seeing that, that, you know, how, what we're dealing with the pain and, and how it feels. But, and I also don't, I also want a kid with his mom and dad who's six years old watching for the mom and dad to be like, I want my kid to race dirt bikes. I don't want them to be like, you know, Ooh, this stuff looks, I think that we've kind of, some of us get so jaded to be like, we're so gnarly. We crash really hard and we keep going and we do this and that, but like that can kind of alter people away. You know, when, when I, when I meet Mm. someone and they ask me what I do, I ride dirt bikes. The first thing that's so dangerous. And I, I try to be like, you know, no, not so much. I do my best to, to, um, you know, avoid any injury and so on and so forth. Like life's dangerous, but I don't want, yes. you know, the, the basic person who's like maybe thinking about buying their kid a dirt bike to be like, I'm out. This is not good. Like, yeah. you know, our sport is not quite as dangerous maybe as, 
as it can be made up to be. Like there's a lot of things that can keep us safe at the, like nowadays too with how far along we've come. Yeah, so well, I think man, there's like, like there's kind of a, a happy medium. Oh, definitely. And I think that that's one of the cool things about this sport um, is the investment that companies will make into rider safety. Like when you crashed at Atlanta, I mean, I said on, on our Supercross companion, I was like, well, there's the best ad in the world for the new Belmodo 10. I was like, that should not happen. You should not be able to crash like that and your brain still be okay. So the investment that these companies are making into safety is insane. Oh, absolutely. That's like, I got a hold of, you know, my couple contacts at Bell right away and I was like, thank you guys. <laughs> like, it was, <laughs> my helmet really did its job. Like, I mean, obviously, you know how a helmet works. They have the the different foams that are supposed meant to crush in it and I crushed it. Like, um, that was another topic, you know, why did they not have a helmet? Like a lot of people were like, why did they not have another helmet for him, um, to race in a new helmet? And they would have, if that, that's just something that has never happened, right? Like yeah. when are, when are you going to have a rider crash so hard that they damage the helmet to where the helmet's not safe to wear or potentially not safe to wear. And then they're going to go race again. again. Like it doesn't really yeah. make sense. That doesn't make sense. So, um, I guess that just is a, a good example of how good the helmets really are and how good our equipment really is. Um, so yeah, like I, that's another thing I just, I, I want to show the people who are maybe thinking about, you know, getting into our sport and coming in that, um, there's a lot of good, like it's not, you know, we're not always banged up and, um, we do go through a lot, especially as a professional racer, like not everyone that's going to go buy a dirt bike and, and ride it and, you know, is going to become a professional racer and that's fine. Like that's dirt bikes are for fun. Like that's why I still race too. Like, so, um, yeah, like I, I, I try to do the best at setting, uh, the, is how real it can, how real it is. You know, I try to be as transparent with what I deal with and like going back to talking about, you know, being like the fans and seeing the riders and stuff. And, and like, we're just people like we all are. You know, so like when you can look a fan in the eyes and talk to them and they just realize, man, like this guy, I try to put myself like we're all on the same level, you know, but I just race dirt bikes for a living. And, you know, so like that's um, I think when a fan can connect with the racers like that, it brings them closer to our sport. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.